everyone welcome to jgk master class guys in today's video we are going to learn about the coupling constant in proton and mr and the factors affecting it like germinal coupling vicinal coupling long range coupling cis and trans coupling allylic and aromatic coupling so already i have recorded many videos on proton and mr like uh, chemical shift uh, first order nmr differentiation and uh, many more related to c13 number of signal in anisotropic diastrophic i will share the link of all those videos in the description box you can watch it and some of the video i will tell you which is useful before watching this video that also you can find the link in the description uh, description box and uh, as you know that uh, this proton nmr and uh, not only proton nmr but the entire spectroscopy is very useful for mass spe uh, spectroscopy and all the spectroscopy techniques are very useful for msc chemistry and the competitive exams like csir net and gate so uh, do prepare well for all all these topics like last uh, i have uh, uploaded the video on anisotropic effect in proton nmr only so the concept should be very clear so that you can handle the question very easily and confidently here again i will be solving uh, one or two questions of uh, previous years of uh, msc chemistry and if you feel the video is good for you and uh, you can solve many more problems uh, after watching my videos and do like it and share it with your friends so you see the as we are going to discuss about the coupling constant you should know it is represented by capital j and the unit is hertz coupling constant so what is the coupling constant the distance between the peaks in a simple multiplet is called coupling constant so multiplet as we know here that the protons uh, which are in the neighboring environment uh, that split with each other and because of that it shows the multiplets i have already uploaded a video on chemical shift and uh, the uh, pascal's triangle based on that the multiplicity occur pascal's triangle you can uh, find it the first order spectrum uh, video the coupling constant is a measure of how strongly a nucleus is affected by the spin state of its neighbor so first we will discuss these two points by taking the example ethyl iodide so this is the ethyl iodide here you can see how many number of signals you will find in proton and mr if you are not sure about it you can watch my video on number of signals in proton and mr i will share the link so number of signals based on the different types of uh, protons here so as you can see here that uh, the three protons of the csp are in the same chemical environment so it will show one signal and the ch2 two protons are in the same environment environment means the two protons are facing iodide and two uh, protons facing the ethyl so it, it is considered as equivalent proton and so we'll show you a single signal so the there are two signals you can find in the ethyl iodide the nmr spectrum and the, the multiplicity is always a because of the neighboring environment so you can see here it follows the n plus 1 rule since uh, ch2 is having three protons in the neighbor so n value is 3 3 plus 1 the ch2 will show you a quadrant and this ch3 is having two protons in the neighbor so 2 plus 1 3 so this ch3 will show you a triplet now we will see the proton nmr you can notice here this ch3 is having two protons so 2 plus 1 ch3 will show you a triplet here and then ch2 will show you a quadrant here and you can see the very first statement the distance between the peaks in a simple multiplet so this is the multiplet and you can see here the distance between the two here okay the first multiplet is given here 7.5 similarly the other multiplet will also show you the 7.5 here so whatever distance is between the multiplet that distance is considered as the coupling constant and that tells you how strongly this is uh, affected by the spin state of its neighbor here again since this uh, 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 triplet that is uh, because of uh, this uh, cs3 is having because of the cs2 so this cs3 this triplet is because of the cs3 uh, for cs3 and this quadrant is for cs2 so since uh, you can notice here again the multiplet is uh, the distance between the multiplet is the same like 7.5 here and 7.5 here also so it means that two multiplets the two signals are coupling with each other and so it is in the same environment or you can say these are the two neighbors with each other 
So we can put the CS3 and CS2 as a neighbor since the J value is same for the two. So you can notice in the chemical shift video that the shift from the TMS, TMS is the total metal panel is the standard indicator here, standard here. So you can notice here the first shift is 110 and the other shift for the multiplet from the center is 183 hertz here. And the spectrum is recorded at 60 megahertz instrument. So as you increase uh, uh, this uh, uh, instrumental frequency from 60 to 100 to 300, the shift from the PMS increases. But the chemical uh, uh, shift and the coupling constant value remain the constant. Okay, chemical shift value represented by del and j value remains a constant irrespective of the instrumental frequency. This is very important statement. You can note it down that uh, irrespective of the instrumental frequency, the chemical shift value and the coupling constant value remain constant. Only the shift from the PMS changes. So that you can notice here that uh, if you record the same uh, it had already spectrum at uh, 110, uh, this 100 megahertz instrument. So the shift for the triplet uh, increase from 110 to 183 hertz, while for the second multiplet which you are having here increase from 183 to 305 hertz here. And there is a formula to calculate the chemical shift value that you can find in my other video on chemical shift. So this is the coupling constant and you can make a note that J remains constant irrespective of the spectrometer frequency. Now a question comes like what are the factors affecting the coupling constant in PMR spectroscopy? PMR is nothing but the photomagnetic resonance spectroscopy. You can also write uh, one H and MR. So, there are various couplings. Uh, first, uh, we will start with the germinal coupling. Germinal coupling is a two bond coupling. So, two J means two bond coupling. And it is for the CH2 groups uh, and it is very strong. You can notice the value for the J value occurs for the coupling constant between 10 to 18 hertz. So, if the value is between 10 to 18 hertz, means it is a strong and you can notice here. Alkane shows uh, the germinal product which is a two bond. If you see how many bonds involved between H2, H3, 1 and 2. Two bond coupling, it is called the germinal coupling, the same carbon is having the two proton. And for alkane, the uh, coupling constant value varies from 10 to 18 hertz. Visual coupling is a three bond coupling and uh, it varies from 0 to 12, uh, depends on the various systems. Usually, you can consider 8 hertz in general visual coupling. So, in alkanes, if you see like here, it was 2 bond coupling in general. For alkanes, visual means 1, 2, 3, 3 bond coupling. The two protons on the adjacent carbon uh, it shows 6 to 8 hertz, as you can notice here, visual coupling. Long range coupling uh, is uh, usually 4J or more than 4J coupling. And it's very small, 0 to 2 hertz. You can find uh, double shape, zigzag type of patterns. You usually can notice it in, it is an alkane system. So you can notice uh, it is kind of a W here, where if you notice the number of bonds, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So total 4 bonds are there, including the hard CH bond. So it is called the W coupling or zigzag coupling. The coupling is weak. Because the, as the distance between the two protons increases, the strength of the coupling decreases. This you can also note it down. And here in general, the distance is the smallest, so the coupling is the strongest. So as the distance increases, for visual also it is three bond. As the uh, number of bond increases, the strength of the coupling decreases, and so the coupling constant value decreases. Now next is trans coupling which is again the three bond coupling only. So trans coupling is usually stronger than the cis coupling as you can notice here. Trans coupling value varies from 11 to 18 hertz which is the stronger coupling compared to cis coupling 6 to 15 hertz. Okay so we have seen in visual coupling uh, for alkene it was usually 8 hertz while you can notice here for trans coupling if you are having C double bond C with respect to that two hydrogens are there at transposition 11 to 18 hertz, cis coupling. So you can actually distinguish cis or trans isomers based on proton and 
now. So if the coupling constant that is given is between 11 to 18 hertz, so usually you can consider here that around uh, uh, 12 or 13 hertz you can find uh, trans coupling. Around 8 you can see the cis coupling or you can consider 16 hertz you usually get the trans coupling and for cis it is 8 hertz. So easily you can distinguish the two isomers. So this is the cis uh, you can notice. With respect to double bond, you have two hydrogen on the same side, and this is three bond coupling one, two, and three. Trans coupling, the two hydrogens are opposite, and this is a stronger coupling. The value is also higher here. Aromatic couplings. So there are, we know, the two hydrogens can be ortho, meta, and para. So if the two hydrogens are coupling with each other and ortho to each other, then the coupling is. 7 to 10 hertz and it is one of uh, in the aromatic coupling it is the strongest coupling. You can notice here 1, 2, 3, the two hydrogens if they are ortho to each other, they are coupling then the value then is from 7 to 10 hertz. It is a 3 bond coupling. For meta bond it is 4 bonds now and because the distance increases, the number of bond increases, the coupling constant value decreases. So it is 2 to 3 hertz and you can notice here it is a W pattern, right? It is W pattern, four bonds involved, two to three words for meta coupling. The two hydrogens are meta to each other. Where again it is a five bond coupling, so further it is weak coupling compared to meta. Zero to one hertz, you can notice number of bonds are in here. Five, one, two, three, four, five. So para coupling. So therefore you can distinguish aromatic uh, isomers like ortho, meta and para based on proton and mass. Allylic coupling is again 4J coupling and 4 bond coupling is weak, 0 to 2 hertz, very small. You can notice this is a 3 carbon system and with 3 carbon you have one hydrogen on both terminal for the hydrogen and if you notice it is again a W coupling, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 hydrogen, allylic hydrogen and so it is a weak 0 to 2 hertz. Similarly, if they ask another question, I give an account on the vicinal and germinal coupling, you can describe it. Nicely, taking vicinal example for alkanes, for alkenes, you can take here like cis and trans, vicinal coupling, you can take aromatic ortho coupling also, that is also vicinal coupling, three bond coupling. Germinal is a two bond coupling, so wherever two bonds are involved, you can show the germinal coupling, wherever the three bonds are involved, you can show the vicinal coupling. So I hope you understood uh, this uh, type of couplings and the values and the application of uh, the coupling constant value. In uh, other video, I, uh, I will prepare uh, the cyclohexane, the two proton if they are uh, if they are axial to each other or axial equatorial or equatorial to each other. What is the difference in the uh, coupling constant value? So I hope uh, you understood it. We can solve now the problems related to the coupling constant. Happy learning.